Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to paint simple autumn flowers, leaves, and berries that you can use for your watercolor journal, thank you cards, or bullet journal designs, or for warm-ups. So let's get started. If this is your first visit, my name is Aura, and on my channel I teach drawing and painting tutorials. So if you want to learn more about making art, please consider subscribing to my channel. Here in my palette is some Daniel Smith and Winsor Newton watercolors. This first simple flower that I'm doing is a corn flower, and I am beginning with sepia and perylene green for the base and stem, lightly adding to dry hot press watercolor paper. I'm using a black val... I'm using a black velvet round size 8 brush. For the petals, I'm using a light mix of indigo and just making easy little strokes, not worrying about perfect shapes. By the way, all the supplies I used are listed with links to purchase them in the video description. The next autumn flower is a helenium and it looks a little like a daisy from the side but with a taller center area. I'm starting it by dabbing gold ochre, leaving a little white space between the dabs. On the bottom, I add some burnt sienna and sepia for the darkest area. Using gold ochre again, I am painting the petals just like on the cornflower, but these petals are created using simple little strokes starting at the bottom instead of the top. Then use whichever earthy colors you want for the stem and leaf. I'm using the leftover gold ochre that's still on my brush and some burnt sienna. The next design is a simple twig and berries, and I'm starting with the berries. I'm using alizarin crimson and the very tip of my brush to make the round berry shape. I'm trying to keep a little white highlight in the centers, but if you make a mistake, you can always fix it when it's dry using some little uh, using a little acrylic paint or a white gel pen to fill in the white spot later. I'm making these berries in groups of two to four. Then I mix a brown neutral shade to paint the twig and branches right up to the groupings. The next one is a protea flower. I mixed a neutral purpley brown from burnt sienna and permanent magenta, but of course you can make it any color you choose. I'm painting the petals into a pine cone type shape, starting with the outer petals, then the inner petals are painted in between. I'm leaving some white space, but connecting it in other areas so it looks more relaxed and less like a stencil. Then another simple stem and leaf finishes the shape. The next design is a simple leaf shape, but it's also an opportunity to add some extra color. I'm using gold ochre and permanent magenta and alizarin crimson on the little leaves and just letting the colors mix on the stem. The next flower is a simple zinnia, which I will finish in two steps. The first step is just painting an alizarin crimson blobby area with a connecting stem and leaf and letting it dry. This next flower is something that I'm not sure if I saw it somewhere or sort of made it up, but it looks autumny to me, so I wanted to include it. I mixed indigo with permanent magenta to get this deep plum color. 
I'm making wavy little strokes with the tip of my brush that start from the bottom. This is another one that will be finished when the first layer is dry. The next design is a simple sunflower or it could be a black eyed Susan depending on how you wanted to design the petals. Starting with the center, I'm using sepia and making an imperfect circle by dabbing it on the paper. Then make petals using gold ochre so they are wider on the bottom and narrower at the top. Connect a few to the center if you wish. Uh, the brown will run into the yellow, but you can manage that by using a damp brush to lift some of that out. You can also wait for the center to dry before adding the petals if you want a cleaner look. I wanted it to look a little messy and loose, so that's why I did it this way. Then I used Perlene Green for the stem and the pointy leaf. Now going back to the berries, I wanted to add some dimension, so I'm using indigo to paint the centers of the berry clusters and darkening the stem a little bit. And down to the made up flower. I'm using a magenta mix to go over and around and between the original petals. This gives it some dimension and makes the petals look more delicate and transparent. I'm darkening the base of the petals and adding a purple stem to finish it. Now onto part two of the zinnia. I used a deeper purple magenta mix to add the texture. I added a center dot towards the top and made little connected dabs all around it to look like the shadows between the close little petals. I used that same color to draw the lines on the leaf. Back to the cornflower, I'm adding another glaze of indigo and some more texture on the base with dabs of sepia. Some more texture for the helenium as well. and deepening the base of the Protea using a deeper purple magenta color. I'm going to darken the center of the sunflower and glaze a brown shade over the green stem and leaf. And that finishes off the eight designs. But I'm going to go in between some of these and add some little filler designs of leaves and berries to round out the color scheme and just to decorate the blank spaces. I hope this video gave you some ideas for your watercolor journal, bullet journal, or however else you plan to create these little designs. You can leave me a comment and let me know how you would like to use them. You can also click up here in the top right corner to see my part two of autumn foliage, which includes pumpkins, mushrooms, seed pods, and leaves. I will also link to that video in the description. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel to see more art tutorials. You can also click your notification bell to find out whenever a new tutorial is published and then share this video on social media. Happy painting and I hope you join me for the next tutorial. Bye!